I want to feel like Nicola is proud, happy I'm here, and cares that I'm here. Misha and Nicola's storyline is currently playing out on this season of 90 Day Fiancé before the 90 days. And we're excited and honestly a little anxious to see how this will end. We had a lovely chat with Misha who gave us some insight into Nicola's personality and teased what we can expect in the coming weeks. If I go home, not engaged to you, Nicola, then this will be over. So hi, Misha, you look lovely. So do you. <laughs> Thank so do you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was just catching up on all the latest stuff that's been going on on the show and I'm learning some new things that I didn't know. I was learning that you didn't sign up for 90 Day Fiancé, that somebody signed you up. It was initially by my older sister and she had said, I don't know if you've ever seen this show, but this show is exactly you and Nicola. Mm -hmm. So in, in my mind, I thought, oh my goodness, like they're just gonna document <laughs> my relationship with Nicola and I get to meet him. Like this mm -hmm. is amazing. It, for me, moving so much with divine providence, for me immediately, I was like, if that's really what it is, sign me up i love it and were you a fan were you did you watch the show before not before not before okay. she brought that to my attention no um and i was careful not to watch it because the minute i said to anyone especially my other sister and my brothers mm -hmm. they said wait wait have you seen the show you might want you might want to reconsider <laughs> yeah um but i don't i'm not one um uh, I'm not one to just take the advice like that. I, I always look at doors opening in life for a reason. And one of the things that was most precious to me was my friendship slash relationship with Nicola. So for me, even though they were saying, wait, 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 it's not like maybe what you're used to with news being just like a simple format. It's gonna be more dynamic than that. It's gonna be more complex. But for me, I just thought, no, 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 don't. I don't wanna hear any of that. Mm -hmm. I just wanna walk to the door and meet Nicola. So I was like having to silence everybody. No, that's a good thing because you probably would have been scared after watching some of the, <laughs> <laughs> some of the past it's episodes. It's possible. <laughs> yeah. But so you didn't really watch the show. So what were you, what were you thinking going in and how was it different from what you thought it would be? You know, going into it, I really did try to not do any, like some people said, oh, did you start watching the show so you could see what you were up against? I didn't because I thought, well, it doesn't really matter. Like mm -hmm. I'm just gonna be me and I'm just gonna go meet Nicola and then the rest is history. Now, in my mind though, I thought to myself, like how complicated can this be? Like you just go over there and be yourself and meet somebody. But it was, it was slightly more different than that because you know, the reality of the situation is you are in a pressure cooker because mm -hmm. you go you go out there, you have a minimal amount of time to meet someone. And in that minimal amount of time, yes, of course you have people with you, but the reality of my life was that I, but I have real concerns. I have real questions. I really have to get a lot of work done in a short amount of time. And there just happens to be people with us. So you're in a pressure cooker because it's real life mm -hmm. and you're in a pressure cooker because there's other people watching it. So it was a more stressful dynamic than what I, in my mind, it was going to be this cute, we're going to run around the Holy land and I get to see all these things with someone who I love very much and all that kind of stuff. But no, it was like the boiling pot of water. It was, it was more stressful than I, I probably imagined. So we're watching the show and Nicola's personality is, I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to find the right word. <laughs> so Maybe you need to change your attitude toward me. I got you. <laughs> right. So you're saying, right, that his personality when you were um, speaking to him over the past seven years was completely different than when you actually met. So tell me what he's what he's like that we're not seeing. So what I want you to keep in mind is that what I just said about like this pressure cooker, mm -hmm. even for me, even, even having a little bit of television know-how before going out there, I wasn't even prepared for that. And this is someone who has 
lived life in front of people watching with a camera. So if I was unprepared for that kind of pressure cooker, imagine then someone yeah. who spent his entire life basically in prayer, almost alone, sometimes with you know a priest or a monk or another religious or whatever, but basically in isolation with prayer. That was the, the majority of his life. So there was a couple dynamics going on. Number one, you had me, he's meeting me in person, in the flesh. You can't hide behind the telephone anymore. Right. You're meeting a woman, a woman, all the hair and the makeup and the boobs and all this stuff. You're meeting this woman in the flesh. That's hurdle number one, mm-hmm. here, here, right? Yeah. And then on top of that, then also you're in the boiling water that even I am like, oh my gosh, this is a lot. It's dramatic, it's stressful, there's a lot going on and we need real life answers on top of it. So for me having, for me struggling with that, imagine now him struggling with all of that and the woman component with zero experience and the relationship component and there's people with you. So when when I was starting to feel like, Nicola, you're being different with me now in person than you were on the phone. A little bit, I have to say, yeah, because he is different. He could hide behind a telephone. Right. But then on the other aspect, I have to, I have to give him a little credit and say, but shame on me though, because there's a lot going on that's even I'm struggling with. Mm-hmm. So I, Nicola is a very different type of person, no question about it. But had those differences been so, so awkward and weird for me that I couldn't have talked to him, we wouldn't have spent seven plus years just immersed into each other and our friendship. So I already knew he was different. I already knew he was awkward and quirky and all that, but I knew another side of him. Right. So we're going to give, we're going to give Nicola some grace. Knowing what yeah. no, no. Oh, you need to give him a lot of grace. We're, we're going to give him some grace and let this story play out without too much judgment. We're still going to judge a little bit because it's a show. Yeah. <laughs> and and that's good. It makes, it makes all of us tough, right? And it's also good. we're on your side. Listen, <laughs> we just want the best for you, Misha. Okay. Oh, I, lo- I love you for that. Pray for me. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm, I'm looking at you and Nicola and you're gorgeous and intelligent and all these things, right? So you can get anyone you want. You're just like, that's the man I want. What is so different about Nicola that you decided to go through all of this for him? Well, I would be very remiss and misleading if I did not say that what I was looking for in a person post my conversion experience was very different than pre-conversion. Pre-conversion, I had a very secular worldview. It was just worldly on paper. Do you fit my expectations? But post-conversion experience, I no longer had a secular worldview. In an instant, I had a sacramental worldview. I all of a sudden now was seeing the world from the eyes of God and the church. So without making this a big theological you know, podcast, I, I will say this though, it's very real. It happened to me, it's very real. And it was scary and confusing. So in my prayer then, I said, I don't have anyone in my life to lead me with this new worldview. I don't know anything about it. I have no one. So in my prayer, I started to ask God to send me friends who could help me answer questions that I just didn't know. Well, I don't know if I should say this, but maybe be careful what you wish for because (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he sometimes will send you people and circumstances that you never on your own volition would have chosen. And that was me. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have chosen that. I wouldn't have right. chosen, I wouldn't have chosen Nicola to come in my life. I wouldn't have chosen certainly that to blossom into, especially at that point, a loving relationship and all that and all that. So for me, I I really have to say, again, I'd be remiss if I didn't say this. Nicola came through prayer. And if that is what God sent me and it blossomed into a beautiful best friendship and subsequent relationship. Now we don't know the end of the story, but it doesn't matter for that time and space. And in that season in my life, it was exactly what I needed. And I'm forever indebted to Nicola for that. I love that actually. Cause I, I agree. I believe that God does send people in your life 
for a particular time for whatever reason and you just have to trust that so and even when we don't make we can't make sense of it from our senses from our eyes ears mm -hmm. right like yeah. sometimes our senses are saying what are you cuckoo would mm -hmm. you lose your mind mm -hmm. but then the deeper you go into that you start to go i see what you did there yeah. i need this more than i knew have you watched any scene and you're cringing and thinking why did i do that why did i say that has that happened yet not not so much and i mean this in the most humble way possible but not so much what i have said where i said i wish i didn't say that but what nicola said you know how many things i can tell you misha that i don't like 10 hours makeup all the messy clothes misha i sometimes i go i wish you didn't say that there has what been did he say? What, give me one of those things that he said that you're cringing. <laughs> well, of course, anytime uh, someone looks at you and tells you that you are cute when you're mute, for example, it's not going to sit right no. for any normal human being, right? And and especially you add on to that at that time, I was so incredibly tired, physically tired, but also mentally and emotionally exhausted. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to gain a little traction with him because we have to move this from just getting to know each other in person mm -hmm. to actually being romantic and cute and flirty. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my Lord, like, how am I going to get you from awkward and so that. to like sexy and cute and fun, right? <laughs> so, for, so for me, it was, yeah, it was the comment and it was dumb. I, but I also know his sense of humor. I mean, Nico's got a really good heart, but he can say things in English that I just want to go, okay, how did that translate in Arabic and Hebrew in your mind? Because when you said that in English, it didn't sound good. I don't like it. it. So it's a cultural thing that probably we are not understanding. Because you just said Nicola has a sense of humor. Yeah. We yeah, he does. not see that. <laughs> <laughs> you you do not see the sense of humor in me? Yeah. I think that's, that's in Nicola. I've not seen that, any of that in Nicola. <laughs> I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Although I will say, mm -hmm. you know, you're seeing these snapshots yeah. of a human being, you know, you get seconds, if not, if you're lucky, maybe minutes. Right. But you get these seconds, you get these minutes out of weeks and weeks and weeks of actual real life right so it's hard it's understandable to me when someone says well i heard him say this so i don't see that i have to go i totally get that because that's all you've seen that's all you know right so for me i think nicolas he it's a tough one for him because yeah you definitely have a cultural a cultural thing right. and his sense of humor in his head in his own language <laughs> comes up very different when then he translates it and says okay. things in english um but but there, there's no question he's got a good heart or i would never have spoken to him ever right right no that makes yeah. sense. So there was a scene that I saw and Nicola was speaking. I think it was his friend. I'm not sure if it was a family member. And he said that his mom is not going to like you. Did you, was this a shock when you saw it back? I think it always hurts a little bit. It, it wasn't a shock in that he has mentioned that to me before. But I think when I saw it again, it just, there's always as tough as you can get to certain comments that you know that are cultural, religious or otherwise, when you hear it again out of the mouth of someone um, that you care about, it always hurts a little bit. But it, it wasn't so much a shock. It just, it just always, it, there's no way around it. It's always gonna hurt your feelings when someone, when you hear that someone's not gonna give you a chance based on, you know, life and, Right. me not me you know being a divorced woman or already a mother or whatever it's 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 hurtful because not only can i not change my past i never would it has made me exactly who i am today and i have to be grateful even though i have a lot of shortcomings i have to be grateful just for who i am and what god has given me up until this point so there's no regrets so when someone tries to pull your past into your future it's bothersome it's not healthy it's not helpful and it's bothersome yeah. and then it also hurts you know do you think there's anything nicola could have done on his end on that end to kind of help how you came on the scene came into the family to make it a little bit easier for you no doubt about it i think that this is one of the 
one of the most aggravating things of my entire experience was, you know, you can't help but say, well, if I was in this situation, if I was hosting this person, how would I be, yeah. right? So in my mind, I was like, oh my gosh, if someone came over to my country, didn't speak the language, was meeting my family, I would be their blanket and protective. Well, I got none of them. Yeah. And so for me, that when I say I was annoyed and and that was one of the things I don't get mad a lot, but that was one of the things that really pushed me. Uh, but I also, you know, you said it perfectly earlier in this interview. You said we're going to give Nicola a lot of grace. This is where I had to give a lot of grace in that he's never, ever, ever been around someone who num number one, let alone introducing to his family, but then even in a hosting, yeah, hosting way. So I go, okay, is this something that? it's lack of experience and you just don't know, or are you so uncomfortable around your family because of what they might think of me that it's putting you in this cage? And I think it's both. So okay. I think it makes you a little bit of like, you're almost frozen stiff. You don't know what to do or how to act. Annoying to me, but understandable. Yeah, and also that's something I've noticed with if not all of the men on the show like in these situations it's as if they they're just waiting for the woman to arrive and they just spring it on their family and because of that it's just like they're looking at this poor girl like a villain because who are you where did you come from why you know it's and the men need to get it together and do better and learn they do. Yeah. They do. Many, yeah. many years ago, I read this book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. And I always thought, okay, it's kind of a weird book. And I kind of shelved it. Now in my life, I'm going, I totally get it. Like women just predominantly are wired so different. Emotionally, yeah. like, we're multi-talented, multi-tasking all the time where men are like a single note, right? Yeah. If something, if they feel uncomfortable with something, they're just in there. They can't think long-term. It makes no sense. Some of their it's actions, it's so irrational to me. I'm like, it that was the hard honestly that was probably the hardest thing of the entire trip that was the hardest thing i was completely abandoned yeah i could i could feel that you were alone like in, you know i think maybe what they should start doing well some persons do that is they bring somebody along you know your sister should have come with you the one that signed you up for this she should have been there with you misha i know you know what hindsight is always 2020 and i was thinking the same thing the whole time i was like when i get back to the us they are going to hear about this because i was i literally felt so alone even if yeah my sister one of my sisters or my daughters or someone that i could oh, have had to lean on yeah yeah i could do that again there's many yeah. things you do a lot different if i could well, do you, well you know you live and you learn and just you learn <laughs> Can't let, so before we go, what can you tease? I know you can't give away anything, but what can you tease for what we can expect to see in the coming weeks? Well, you're definitely gonna, you're definitely gonna see more awkward because <laughs> to be honest, you can't with Nicola, and especially with us together, you can't get away from it. It's right. just it's just awkward. So you're definitely gonna see. A, you're going to see um, more emotion for me. Um, and you're going to see two people, both both non-unperfect people trying to make it work, believing that for whatever crazy reason, God placed them together. And is that workable? So it's hard. There's conflict. There's a lot of emotion. Um, and I'll tell you my mindset. I can't tell you the end, but I'll tell you my mindset. My mindset in the moment when you're watching this is I, all I could think is I very much love this person for who he is. And I know him very, very well after years and years of, of talking to him. And can we resolve this? If not a relationship, can we remain friends? Is that salvageable? Because at the very end, even if it's a romantic relationship, I believe that you have to have that best friendship and that's at the center at the core what mattered the most to me so i was literally at times wondering am i gonna lose my best friend also right. so that's kind of where my head space is there's a lot that goes on there but yeah. i think i think the i think the people watching it will be taken on a very human journey because okay. it's very not perfect but it's the challenges in different ways we all face in one way or another I love it. That's a great way to end it, Misha. I'm hoping for a happy ending for you, whatever that may look like. I'm wishing and praying that for you and we'll be watching.
Thank you, honey. Thank you so much for this. So nice Thank to meet you. you.